Both Sides Now is an immersive arts experience that happened in Kutik Pat Hospital, in which issues of dying well, end of life issues, the process of approaching your death with dignity and integrity were raised through a range of arts exhibitions, films, theatre performances, and therefore inviting audiences to think about these issues in a safe, conducive space. Ben Foundation and ACM Foundation, they're very progressive for wanting to take on a topic like end-of-life issues. So we were very pleased when you know they expressed that they're open to working with artists who bring this issue out to more people. KDPH, it's a meditative space. The management there is just wonderful, you know, they're very open and progressive. They've been trying to address end-of-life issues with patients and caregivers. They express, you know, some of those challenges to us and so we were very, again, excited to be able to work with the arts and see how we could, again, create safe spaces for even their own staff uh, to, to speak with patients and caregivers about such issues. We all know that in a lot of Asian societies, especially amongst Chinese, death is a taboo subject. Uh, so using the right words, uh, creating the right environment, uh, creating the kind of context that make people feel, feel comfortable. But yet being too comfortable, one doesn't reflect deep enough. So we were constantly searching for that balance. Lost Forwards comes about because you know, I've experienced going to hospital and there you are, you wanted to say a lot to the people whom, the person whom you're visiting. Then you find, it's so hard to find the right words to talk about. I've also heard about doctors trying to find the right words to talk to their patients, you know, about living and dying. Then we started to think, what about, you know, like in the comics, we put up speech bubbles and thought bubbles, place them at strategic locations, at waiting rooms, and when people sit there, they are deep in thoughts. And then when you see the thought bubbles, it helps you to see. And it's, it then becomes a kind of a mirror projections of yourself going to the hospital, thinking about all these issues. Entrances that exist uh, draws upon themes like uh, the mandala. From a distance, you can see right through. You can see the start at the end. You can see the entrance and the exit very clearly but what we want is we hope that people can go through it that life is not a straight path as much as we like to think it's a journey to go within and explore living well and dying well This exhibition is actually a collection of objects that healthcare workers, caregivers and patients find that you know, gives them that strength to go on each day in facing all the different important entrances and exits of their lives. And so then we also started to think about doing a piece of theatre that celebrates and tells their stories. This piece of Song of Tomorrow is performed at the boardwalk. Actually, you can see the sun setting, the sky changes, and as you hear these stories, you look at how nature changed, life going on behind you as people continue to jog and run and try to keep healthy. And then you hear different stories, fighting for life, life being celebrated. And you start to really think about how you would want to start to think and deal with this issue of living and dying. Turn to Turn is using the idea of the pinwheel and participants, audiences who come to the space are invited to make their own pinwheel. They are asked to write on that sheet of paper what they want to hold on to, what they want to forget, what they want to remember, what they want to let go of. It's meant to be playful, it's meant to be enjoyable, but it is meant to be reflective as well. And the enjoyable part, of course, is when you pin your pinwheel and then you see it spinning along with other pinwheels, or it's very still, waiting to be spun by the wind, then there is this anticipation. What else? What if?
Another exhibit was Wills and Will Nots. So this exhibition was based on the idea of making a will. But instead of looking at a legal will, we looked at one in which people articulated what they also would not like to happen. So there were openings of sentences which then people filled in or continued. People could write down things like, I will not want them to mourn for too long, or I will not want my doctor to forget me. And they could be as quirky as, I will not want sad music to be played. And this is meant to engage people in a process of thinking about some of the things that they don't usually say. So after we had conducted a series of interviews with healthcare professionals, we took these resource materials and we started to work uh, on them and make them into films. And with that, what we had done is we also collaborated with several other filmmakers, graphic designers and animators. It's not to say that by using animation, it's any less real, but I think animation was a good way to ease people into engaging with this kind of difficult topic. Another film installation that we had for both sides now is one titled Something's Lost and Something's Gained. We had worked with filmmaker Noraini Sikanda Shah and we had gathered together children and interviewed them about their own experience of learning what is loss and what is grief. And I think in hearing the stories of these kids, you know, processing making sense of what is loss and what is grieving, what's the meaning of life and death in a sense, through a child's eyes. It reminds us adults and the audiences that we can keep learning how to adapt and how to make sense of living well and leaving well. Another film installation is called Ama Revisited. In this piece, what we had done is we had shown Anthony Chen's short film Ama that was inspired by his experience of having lost his grandmother. We took this opportunity to also then pick up the pieces, so to speak, with um, the cast of that film and also the director to find out seven years on what had been their experience in making this film and in the intervening years since, how have they changed, not just as actors, but as people in their relationship with death and dying. One of the components of both sides now is this thing called what we say when we say. So we invited um, many guests from all walks of life um, so that they could give their perspectives. We knew that we needed to frame it so that we could give permission, so to speak, for people to express what they needed to say, but in a public space, because that was an important signifier that, you know, it doesn't have to happen behind closed doors. It's all right. We had a good turnout for the sessions. I had a good mix of uh, people in the audience. We had old uh, folks, young people, people who came especially for the talks. We had people who were just passing by. I think what we managed to achieve in some way was to have people come together to draw strength from each other's very real and very candid stories. As a designer, it's not often to be having the opportunity to work on a project talking about a topic about uh, living and dying. As we go through the whole process, I realized that it takes some time for me to warm up to this topic and to understand it deeper. So I guess that is also the same kind of approach that we want for our audiences because some people may not be ready to talk about this. To see people actually look at death and not get scared about it and kind of respect it to a certain degree, um, yeah, it, I was pretty intrigued. When I first saw the place, I was like, Okay, this kind of looks really happy. The impression of the place was a bit different from what I expected. You know, it turned out to be quite a nice experience for me. I was brought here by my daughter, Faye. This is a brilliant idea. This is an excellent idea. Yeah, we, we have this creativity to, to, to put art and, and death. It's an eye-opener. It's, it's a crazy idea to have this topic in a hospital. But on the other hand, it is a very natural topic. If someone was coming down, downstairs for a walk because they need a break from taking care of someone upstairs who might be very, very ill, um, this might be a very, very useful and helpful exhibit for them to just pause for a while 
and to reflect. And even if this exhibit helps three people or four people, I think it would be really worth it. I just watched Songs for Tomorrow and um, Sue highly played me. It was quite moving. I think I got some tears in my eyes still. <laughs> I remember Joe again, my, my, my patient. It's also a bit of kind of closure for, for me as well. I think it also got me reflecting a little bit about the deaths that I have witnessed um, um, and hearing people share about that, realising that I'm not alone in this kind of fear and oh my gosh, what am I going to do when my parents leave? Um, how can I prepare for that and how can I prepare my parents for that as well? Those were just some of the thoughts that went through my mind as I was watching the performance. I think I felt a, quite a personal connection to the topic. By making such an artwork that we hope can affect them emotionally and spiritually, which goes deeper, rather than giving them facts, they can carry with them the experience and go back home over the days, months, years, start thinking them through. I remember what my husband said before he left. The last day when he's gone, he asked me to bring him uh, after the x-ray. Uh, he asked me to buy an ice cream and, and he, he took a bite. He put the whole ice cream in his mouth and he just eat it up. The whole ice cream. He just tell me, uh, Dear, uh, this is paradise. <laughs>